This game is rated E10 for ages 10 and up. Sonic Lost World. Super Sonic Galaxy. Way past cool. Hey everybody, this is Double RPG here, and welcome back to another exciting and stellar episode of Double RPG Reviews. Oh, uh, why the hell am I even wearing this? Sonic Lost World for the Nintendo Wii U. This game marks the 16th main installment of the main line of Sonic the Hedgehog games on consoles. Yes, as much as I hate to say it, but that piece of crap Sonic 3D Blast is also a main series game as well. Good thing it had some sweet music to accompany it. Anyway, Sonic Lost World seems to try a new approach with the 3D Sonic formula that we have been comfortable with since Sonic Unleashed to Sonic Generations, and this game goes for more of a Super Mario Galaxy approach along with elements of the unreleased Sonic Extreme for the Sega Saturn. Critics have been mixed on whether this game is good or bad, kind of like Sonic Unleashed. I am more leaning on the positive side while remaining in the middle. How so? Well, we gotta go fast to see for ourselves, guys. We're up, over, and getting on with review number 20. Sonic's newest adventure begins when he and his sidekick Tails track down Dr. Robotnik and his minions Orbot and Cubot flying up in the sky while carrying a container full of kidnapped forest animals like what we have seen in the Sonic days of old. Eggman manages to get the upper hand though by making the tornado get hit and man down on a mysterious planet in the sky. This unknown land is known as the Lost Hex, where the regions are all hexagonal to represent their climates along with the appropriate flora and fauna. Our heroes learn that Eggman has a base within the Lost Hex, and they must travel to their destination to stop whatever the mad scientist has up his sleeve. The journey seems to be sidetracked when a mysterious and psychotic group of Zeddies known as the Deadly Six are taking orders from Eggman to stop the blue blur in his tracks. Fortunately, Sonic stops Eggman's enslavement of the monsters, but both him and his nemesis end up with no fortune as the Zeddies take control of the Badniks and Eggbots, and they unleash their fury on Sonic, Tails, Eggman, and his robotic minions. Knowing that the Deadly Six proved to be a deadly threat to both sides, our heroes and villains must work together in hopes to take down the Deadly Six and stop them from destroying their home world. In a nutshell, it's another one of those stories where Sonic and Eggman have a truce to stop the true root of all evil within the game's story, like in the finale episodes of past Sonic games since Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast, but a whole game about it is one that is definitely a first. Will it work? Or is it part of an elaborate ruse where the deranged doctor hopes to conquer the planet in secrecy? I definitely vote for more of the latter if you know what I mean. If you are familiar with the gameplay of past Sonic games, chances are you probably are going to feel very new to Sonic Lost World's controls. You start the game off with just your wit on how you control the Blue Hedgehog, but don't get the idea that you'll be going through a stage really fast with some control during a Sonic boom. Did I just make a pun? In each level, you control Sonic to make it all the way to the end of each stage in linear fashion, but there are instances where you can traverse a level to reach your goal with your own choosing. Think of it kind of like going back to the traditional 2D Sonic formula, where you can choose between a high road and a low road with finding items and other collectibles you wouldn't see from one place or the other. Some of these paths you take within each level can give you better rewards than not having in any of those other ones. This game's controls have you moving Sonic forward with either walking, running, or spin dashing in place. Since the 3D Sonic game starting with Sonic Unleashed, Sonic controlled more like a race car while running forward, and you had to get adjusted to the mechanics as if you were driving one. Sonic Lost World ditches that practice as the folks at Sonic Team wanted to give gamers the feeling of controlling Sonic's movements fully. Whether you run or walk, you have better control to move the hedgehog in the direction you choose, and you don't have to worry about running into walls or anything like that, as you can make sharp turns to avoid dangerous hazards. Attacking your foes comes into two categories of attacking. You can do normal homing attacks to defeat the enemies, or you can use the new homing kick ability to punt the bad nicks into oblivion. Sometimes these foes or the Deadly Six are immune to one of the attacks, so there are many points where trial and error are going to happen frequently. You better be on your toes with what attack you choose, or else you'll end up being struck down for the count. 
Since Sonic's default movement is walking, the ZR button on top of the Wii U gamepad acts as the run button, and this element can be considered a blessing and a curse. With this feature, you can scale up walls or even run on them sideways to collect rings or hit springs that are within reach. Scaling up walls doesn't always have to be a must, as you can side hop a wall to make it to another wall adjacent to the one in order to dash onto that instead. By scaling, you can grab ledges that can't be reached from ground level, and you can use this ability to even cling onto parallel floors with grass to hang and move onto there in some occasions as well. With all these abilities in place, using these skills are required in order to go through the 3D and 2.5D segments of each stage to reach your goal. Items in the game consist of rings to give you protection, and collecting every hundred of them will give you an extra life, thanks to the most recent patch. Others include ones that you can obtain from White Wisps on the world map, or from ones that send items through the Miiverse community on the Wii U. Some of these items resort back to the classic power-ups like the Bubble Shield, Electric Bubble Shield, Dash Shoes, Ring Containers, Invincibility Stars, and new ones that we haven't even seen before. Speaking of Wisps, they return from Sonic Colors, but the number of them are limited to 8 this time around. 9 if you pre-ordered the Deadly 6 edition of the game. 4 of them that return are the Yellow Drill Wisp and the Green Hover Wisp to name those two, and the other 5 are the brand new Red Flying Wisp and the Pink Musical Wisp to fly like a bird or reach newer heights with the help of other musical notes, respectively, just to name those two. It's a shame that all those power-ups from Sonic Colors don't even make it this time around for the Wisps, but that isn't the game's main feature, as it is mostly focused on what I already mentioned from before. Spin dashing returns for Modern Sonic, and it functions differently as holding the ZL button again after holding it for the first time to let Sonic go will make the Hedgehog spin dash non-stop at grueling speed. Finally, the biggest change comes with the homing attack and kick functions as they have a new mechanic where you can focus the strength of the attacks with bullseye targets that continue to build up to equate more strength in the offense. This will make fighting tougher enemies than the Deadly Six even more bearable as a single, powerful strike can defeat those foes instantly. Most of those features can also be used on the Wii U gamepad, but why bother as the buttons on the controller actually do the game better justice? Each level has four modes of play, normal play, time attack, two-player cooperation, and two-player race and they are self-explanatory with two-player cooperation having Player 1 control Sonic, while Player 2 controls an RC aerial vehicle to grab some items without having to go for them on foot, but you have to have the 3DS version of Sonic Lost World in order to access that feature. For what it is, Sonic Lost World's gameplay has variety, and more than what we have seen from before, but mastering the controls takes a short time to get used to, but the practice truly pays off as speedrunning in each level can be breathtaking to the max. If there is something that Sonic Team has managed to do right for Sonic games, then it's them making their games look pretty solid in visuals, whether if it's on a standard definition console or a high definition platform. Since Sonic Unleashed, Sonic Games incorporated the Hedgehog engine to give a Sonic Games presentation really high marks in its photorealistic quality. Sonic Lost World ditches that as Sonic Team incorporates the detailed Havoc physics engine to make the game look very cartoonish and harken its presentation very similar to that of the Sega Genesis Sonic games as well as the most recent Sonic the Hedgehog 4. Level design in each world has a mixture of that said world's traditional environment or something to throw in a loop that you would not expect to see. For example, in the Desert Ruins, the third level is called the Dessert Ruins where everything in the level resembles that of donuts, ice cream, cake, licorice, and cookies. Yum! Obviously, the pun is more of an homage to the Layer Cake Desert World in New Super Mario Bros. U. Frozen Factory Zone 3 is mostly a casino stage where it pays tribute to the Casino Night X in Sonic the Hedgehog 2 with the poker chips, dice, roulette, tokens, and slot machines within the pinball segments. Every world region you step into, something is always to be had within every level which adds more character to the world of Sonic the Hedgehog. As mentioned from before, most of the levels consist of 3D segments where you are given the ability to freely control the blue blur but there are some levels that may consist of 2.5D side-scrolling as well. However, some of the levels may add in more elements to the presentation, as some of the levels have 2D auto-scrolling, 3D on-rail sprints which happen in some of the 3D free-roaming levels too, scaling up and down levels, or even grinding on pipe rails to reach the end. Many of these aspects add variety to the overall level design to make them feel inspired, but there are a couple instances where they are recycled or reused with a palette swap to add the level's theme from that particular world. 
character designs from the in-game cutscenes to the cinematic FMVs look spectacular, as Sega continues to use Sonic's modern design despite them wanting to redesign Sonic after Sonic Generations. While the Deadly Six lack detail, their standard looks are just as generic as their personalities, but come off being deadly much to the name of the group. Everything within the overall game design shines with great quality in the final product, and it is much better than having to witness the FMVs being extremely compressed and pixelated in the inferior 3DS version of the game. I forgot to mention that Dimps worked on that one too, and we all know how infamous they are when working on handheld renditions of 2.5D Sonic games, but wait! Sonic Lost World on the 3DS is their first 3D Sonic game! It doesn't matter, because that version sucks when compared to its superior console version. Ugh, I hate the special stages! I hate them, I hate them, I HATE THEM! By the completion of the Desert Ruins world, Sonic and Eggman form an unlikely alliance to try to take down the Deadly Six as they become much stronger with absorbing the energy of Sonic's homeworld in hopes to equal the challenge. However, Sonic manages to pull through despite Tails ending up as a prisoner by the time he and Eggman arrive at the Silent Forest. After a noble sacrifice by Dr. Robotnik when reaching Lava Mountain, Sonic fights the Deadly Six in one final showdown, consisting of three levels after successfully reuniting with Tails. Sonic remains triumphant in thwarting the Deadly Six, and he and Tails makes a desperate attempt to return the world's energy back, but they are stopped by Eggman who turns out to be alive, as well as Orbot and Cubot. Sonic's battle in thwarting the Deadly Six and their activities was an elaborate scheme set up by the Nefarious Doctor in disguise, as the world's energy absorbed by his reactor is absorbed into his new flying armored robot, and he challenges the Blue Hedgehog in the game's final battle, with our hero remaining number one in the end. Eggman and his cohorts retreat to fight another day, the world's energy is returned with the help of Tails, and Sonic returns to be reunited with Amy and Knuckles, as they enjoy their victory by taking a nap in the shade. I know, right? Sonic saves the world once again, and his adventure will have to continue another time. Meanwhile, Orbot and Cubot manages to save Eggman from being trapped underneath dirt from his nasty fall from the Lost Hex, and part of his mustache was ripped off in retaliation of the forest animals that were all captive. Ah, oh, gee, that rascally doctor doesn't even know when to quit, does he? I'm gonna be honest with you, Sonic Lost World doesn't really add that much extra filler after completing the main storyline. However, there are some things that come out of completing it. First of all, a new world is opened up with a few new levels that you can play where they have mechanics that were not present in the other levels. One of them involves defeating a huge block monster on a Rubik's Cube based on what color it is, a level where you can ride the tornado as Tails pilots his way to the end of the stage, a level where you have to keep moving from disappearing blocks when you step on them, and jumping between spheres that contain spike balls in them to ward off this huge cat-like rendition of Pac-Man. I'm serious! That boss you fight in the level looks like Pac-Man became a furry! Oh jeez, get out of my head! Other than that, nothing really new pops up after completing the bonus world, but that isn't to say the same that there is more to do aside from that. And every level within the seven worlds of the Lost Hex has five hidden red rings for you to collect. These red rings return back from Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations, as they are used to unlock special stages and bonus content, respectively. The surprising thing for this game is that after you collect all five red rings in every level of every world, you will unlock one of the seven Chaos Emeralds for you to collect. Unlocking all seven of them will grant Sonic the ability to become Super Sonic. That's right, that transformation to become Super Sonic in any level of the game returns back from Sonic Colors, and it can be a blessing to get past some of the more difficult parts of every level. Too bad your homing attack isn't upgraded into an instant kill maneuver, as that's the only beef I have with the transformation. Aside from those things, Sonic Lost World also brims with downloadable content. The first one appears from the Deadly Six edition of the game, where you can play a special level where you fight bosses found in the Sega Saturn classic, Nights into Dreams, while the Deadly Six are around. The second piece of DLC to release as of recent is the Yoshi's Island DLC, where you can play a level very reminiscent of the Yoshi's Island series. You know, since this is a fairly new piece of DLC, guess what that means? Download. Review! Quickie!
Sonic Lost World, Yoshi's Island Level DLC. Ready, set, go! This level is fairly short, as you go through it in a 2.5D side-scrolling fashion to free the Yoshis that are entrapped in eggs hiding in those familiar egg-themed boxes. Along the way, you fight against Shy Guys and Piranha Plants, which are the only enemies you will come across, and the Piranha Plants can't be hit with the homing attack or kick, as touching them will make you lose your coins, eggs, or even an extra life. The only way to defeat them are to kick Shy Guys into them. Collecting coins acts as the rings in this stage, and you can collect the five sunflowers in the stage for an extra bonus, but they don't give you anything exciting like something you would expect from Yoshi's Island or a power-up from a White Wisp. That's all you do in the stage, as the enemy count is very limited and there is hardly any exploration involved as it is a straightforward march from point A to point B, with there being some secret areas that harken back to the Mario games from the NES and SNES. It's sad that this only came off as being one level as I would have loved to see a world based on Yoshi's Island to take place because that would have made the DLC more worth it. The only good thing that comes from the DLC is that it's free as long as you own a copy of Sonic Lost World, either physically or digitally. Finally, you can replay the level after obtaining an additional 100,000 points when completing levels, but don't expect anything new with every new playthrough. The only reason to return to the level? Finding all the Yoshi eggs and ending the level and freeing the Yoshis will give you extra lives like candy. More so, and as much as the main game already does since the recent patch to gain extra lives after collecting 100 rings. The final verdict for the Yoshi's Island DLC for Sonic Lost World gets a 6 out of 10. <laughs> So let's get back on track, shall we? One last thing to know is that one more piece of DLC being slated for Sonic Lost World will be themed after The Legend of Zelda, and be sure to look out for a DRQ on that one when it releases. I just hope there's more than what we got from the Yoshi's Island DLC, but I highly doubt it. It's probably going to be free as well, which is definitely going to be a really big bonus, so definitely be on the lookout for that in the future. When I played this game for the first time, my reaction to it was lukewarm where there were certain elements that I enjoyed and despised at the same time, but with the recent release of the patch that corrects glitches, add control options for the Wisp power-ups, and obtaining extra lives with collecting 100 rings, Sonic Lost World has become more enjoyable to play that overshadows many of the frustrations I had with it. But just because it overshadows those tiffs I had with the game doesn't mean I had problems with other areas as I did. First of all, I feel that certain sections of the gameplay within the 2.5D side-scrolling levels came off being unpolished, as I would end up with cheap deaths because of certain platforms being circular or the screen being locked in place when scaling up certain sections of those zones. Plus, I feel that the physics when jumping in a certain direction based on the momentum you have from your movements doesn't really help when there are certain platforms you have to reach in order to gain an extra life or a red ring for that matter. Not that it was difficult to get some of the red rings after the patch to begin with, though. I feel that the run button's curse is that it prevents the flow of moving forward at times as you want to keep going from getting hit or landing on the surface of a platform you want to be on. The boss fights with the Deadly Six are even a mixed bag, as there are hardly any big huge bosses you fight as they mostly take that spotlight throughout the entire game. The only big boss you face is Dr. Eggman's armored robot in the final battle, but nothing more. Plus, every boss you fight requires you to have focused homing attacks and kicks, as there is hardly any strategy in defeating them to begin with, and that is something that has been a problem in every 3D Sonic game, as you usually end up attacking the bosses with just a homing attack, nothing more. Had there been instances where you could spin dash into certain sections to cripple a boss in order to land a blow, or for it to get itself dazed could have added more to the strategy factor, but too bad that Sonic Team didn't try to capitalize on that, it's all homing attack, all the way home. Last, but not least, my main gripe comes from the supersonic transformation itself. I'm glad that it comes back to be playable in the main game and in every level you play in, but I feel that it wasn't utilized for anything extra like having a true final level to where the true final boss is abound, like what you saw from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I feel that the more I unlock supersonic to be used, even after the main game, it only becomes more of an obligation than being an important part of the game's progression. That's the one thing I loved about Sonic 3 & Knuckles, and the last instance they did that was for Sonic Heroes ever since. With all the gripes aside, Sonic Lost World is still a fun game in every way. 
It doesn't really give in the wow factor that Sonic Colors managed to achieve and perfect after Sonic Unleashed, but these new ideas that the game goes for can be improved upon in possible sequels that follow the same format. Sonic Lost World is definitely going to end up as another underrated cult classic in due time, as one will start to feel mixed about this game at first, but we'll take a step back to see the good qualities behind what Sonic Team was going for in this installment. With that in mind, my final verdict for Sonic Lost World is both a buy and a rent. If you feel like you're still skeptical, then give this game a rent, but if you feel that the game works well or if I convinced you about its merits, then give it a buy! So be sure to rate this video and leave your positive and negative feedback down in the comments. And if you like this episode, let me know. And uh, if you didn't, then tell me why. And uh, also, be sure to hit that subscribe button down there as more support from you guys will mean more content is coming from me in the future. Well, anyway, guys, I got another review to work on. So I will catch you later. This is Double RPG signing off and got a juice.